It is time to finalize our bet slip for the NFL Conference Championship Games by talking through some player props. You do that. We have Brandon Gadula on for today, breaking down both these games, where he's seen value, and also some touchdown bets over at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com, joined here as mentioned by Brandon Gadula. He is on Twitter at Gadula13. He is the senior managing editor of numberfire.com. Brandon, happy prop day to you. How are you doing today? Good, good. Um, to clarify, though, we're just talking NFL. We're not doing like Royal Rumble props. I thought that was. Is that a thing of, that's this weekend? That's part of the deal. Yeah, is that a thing? Tomorrow. Do they it's, have it's props? Saturday, I should clarify. Do they have props people. for Royal Rumble? Uh, probably somewhere. Uh, is that the one where there was like. I think it was Stone Cold move from like 300 to one to like plus 550 to win. Is or is that a different thing? Also, how do you bet on it if it's scripted? Whoa. Just well, no, no, it, it's scripted, but yeah. But like, how do you bet on it if it's scripted? Well, I mean, it, it's it. Look, we're not going to get into the details there, but it, it's scripted for some people, but not for everyone. Yeah. But like my mom, when the guy won who wants to be a millionaire, like for the first time, she bet me that he'd win because they had seen it in a casino earlier that day. And so I've been indoctrinated on like dirty betting, you know, from like got the first ever age. millionaire winner. Yeah. The first one, which would have been John Carpenter. Yeah. I was like eight or nine or whatever. And yeah. she tried to like get a quarter out of me by betting me, even though she already knew. So <laughs> I six. feel like there's something fishy up here. And it's just, <laughs> I, I don't know why you can, you, you could also bet on like game of Thrones, like who would be, on the iron throne at the end and like i just i don't i don't know i have no interest in this this explains a lot because anytime <laughs> we try to do like some sort of head-to-head bet yeah. and you know for most fanduel points from a golfer and you're giving up like a hundred dollars in salary that's that, that is, you really push back on push back on that so i think that explains a lot yeah it's it's ptsd from my mom trying to take my money when i was a child you know um <laughs> I'm just I'm just very aware of these things. So yeah. I will not be betting on Royal Rumble. Um, why is that this weekend? I guess it makes sense, but I don't know. I feel like next weekend is probably the better weekend to put it because that's when NASCAR has their first race, the Clash. So like I feel like, you know, backloaded into that weekend. Yeah, I mean, it's on Saturday, so I don't care. I guess Saturday is like my free day. I'm having fun Saturday. I'm not I'm not watching sports. Saturday. Hey, hey, if you want to have some fun. I acknowledge wrestling as a sport, so I feel like you should just take that yeah, as a win. A, yeah, take that as a win and cash out. Cash acknowledge out. Acknowledge the WWE. That for anyone who yeah. knows WWE, they're going to find it funny that you said acknowledge, but... Hit the cash out button right now. You know, I acknowledge the sport. You're good to go. You got that from me. You got that admission. You're good. Let it ride. We're going to break down props for the NFL on Sunday uh, in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast because we had our full preview of the conference championships with Ryan Williams. That went up yesterday, both on the FanDuel YouTube page and on the Covering the Spread podcast feed. I'll have my first look at the Super Bowl matchup coming up on Monday, breaking down what my numbers say about that game so you can get ahead of the market there. We're now getting some good CLV on the Chiefs one for Monday. You know, to ignore the route that it took to get there. But, uh, you know, we're going to count that. So that's why you want to get those bets in early. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> yeah. could not have gotten a better number on Tuesday or Wednesday. Definitely yeah. couldn't have done that. Uh, it's, like one sure of those, yeah. it's, like, it's like one of those packages that you you get and you're like, oh, it's shipping from my own state. And then it's like yeah. goes to the other side of the country. And then it went through Nebraska. <laughs> it went to Barbados. Like it's it's been all around the world. But hey, <laughs> it's back where we're supposed to be, baby. Um but we'll have that uh, first look at the Super Bowl matchup on Monday. Plenty more Super Bowl stuff coming up throughout the next couple weeks as well. So make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread uh, and on the FanDuel YouTube page if you prefer the video version. As mentioned, the NFL playoffs are here and e- the easiest way to get into the action is with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. New customers join today to get started with a $150 in free bets 
guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. Plus, you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay, all in an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. So, football fans, don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus in president select states. First online real money wager only. Bonus issued is non withdrawable free bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1 888 789 7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Kansas and Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700. In Kansas, ksgamblinghelp.com. Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. And in Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789. So we're going to go game by game here and break down uh, some props for both these games. And the tough part of that is the way you view the game playing out impacts the way you view the prop markets here. Because if you think that the Eagles roll, you can have a different view of the prop market than what you have. If you think that the 49ers dominate this game, close spread, et cetera, et cetera. So before we dig into props for 49ers, Eagles, Brandon, I want to get your overall thoughts. Um, how do you see this game playing out and how does that taint your view of the, or alter your view of the prop market? <laughs> I think you have a certain certain view of this game yourself if you use that word. So taint. Well, like it, you know, if you're talking, taint is a hilarious word. I'll take any <laughs> excuse to say the word taint. If I'm being fully honest with you. Yeah, but like for this game specifically, it sounds like you're a little bit pessimistic. Um, I'm a pessimistic that there's points. Yes, which does alter my view of the touchdown market. Uh, I had talked with Ryan yesterday saying that. If the wind speed got to 10 miles per hour, I would take the under. Refresh the weather this morning, 11 miles per hour. Because so I took the under uh, 46 and a half um, because I've got it at 44.3 once you jack the wind speed up to 11 miles per hour. So we're cooking. Where do you, so where do you have like uh, each team's offensive efficiency? Because mm. I have them pretty high based on like relevant splits. So I just was curious there. So I am running the 49ers with no splits because... If I run them with a split with Brock, Brock Purdy, they look like amazing. And I don't yeah, want to I do know that. that's the issue. I'm skeptical. So I'm not doing that. Okay. I'm running their full season numbers. Eagles, I've bumped up uh, mm-hmm. because I want to take out the Minshew games because yeah. he's not as good as Jalen Hurts. Yeah. Um, so-, so overall offensive efficiency in this game, get to the right tab. That help. Um, so I have it at 0.12, like their per play efficiency across the entire game. Uh, whereas the other one is 0. 0.16. Interesting. That's like an EPA per play projection, which is very high. It's a very high number, but the defenses are also very good. So, yeah. And, you know, the, I think the main thing here, or maybe not the main thing, because this can be overblown, but in this game specifically, I think like the pass rates are yeah. going to be super relevant uh, and just overall play volume. You know, these teams do run some plays, but I think there's a difference between plays and pace and like whether the clock like if you're you're completing passes and you know not running um you know bad plays and 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 running into three and outs so like i think the main thing here is the clock should be kind of winding down from from the start and and just kind of you know keep on going um that's especially true with how the eagles defense sets up uh their number fires top ranked adjusted pass defense they're they're 29th in adjusted rush defense um, the 49ers against bottom 10 rush defenses. So, you know, good matchups. I'm sure they're like, I know they're not looking at the same list, but they know it's a bad or, a, you know, a, a positive rushing matchup. Their pass rate over expectation, which accounts for things like game context, um, game location, down and distance. Uh, their pass rate over expectation is, is minus 9.1% in these matchups. Obviously, there are health concerns uh, with both running backs. So they might not be as run heavy as. They would like to be. That being said, um, presumably, like McCaffrey is going to be good enough to go. They can run the ball with Debo Samuel a good bit. And I don't think that Brock Purdy is going to go super vertical against the Eagles. They're fifth in average depth of target allowed, second in pressure rate, albeit is one thing that is a little bit concerning. Uh, I have them last in yards per target allowed on downfield passes, 
naturally that, that's going to be a smaller sample if they're not allowing that many and it could be some variance but the eagles pass rate over expectation with jalen hurts back has been minus 5.3 percent it was only minus one percent they've been a lot more pass heavy than you know you might you might think adjusting for context so like they've been a little bit more run heavy um you know i think there's going to be some efficiency especially if you use that brock purdy split but i'm kind of leaning on the under as well despite the model that that i have uh Liking the over, but only depending on if I think that this team, like the 49ers are at full health and that the Eagles are more like the Eagles and maybe not running it as much. So, yeah, I, I think that I think there's going to be a, a lot of running clock in this game. We talked yesterday during the DFS show, like, are you surprised if this game winds with 20 to 17? No, like no. not at all. 17, 10 might be a little bit surprising, but like, I think especially with, like you'd like to get 47 on that total um, because 47 is such a key number in the NFL, but I don't think we're going to get there uh, with the wind where it's at. I don't think we'll get there, which is why I did take it this morning. So I think that we'll probably see it hit play there. And I agree with your read on that, where that's probably the way things play out. So with that in mind, a, a bit of pessimism around the potential play volume here, which yardage props do you think stand out for the 49ers and Eagles? So I have um, an under for George Kittle at 46 and a half uh, receiving yards. It's minus 114 on FanDuel Sportsbook. Um, he's averaged three and a half targets per game in the playoffs, but 66 receiving yards. Um, his catch rate over expectation is plus 33.2%. But I, like it's a small sample. So I'm not going to say that he's not going to have a positive catch rate over expectation, but this is not really a great matchup. As I already mentioned, the Eagles limit like downfield targets in terms of volume. Again, you know, one target for George Kittle could get him over this. I, I then that's my fear. Yeah. But with their ability to pressure the quarterback, that could kind of steal a few pass routes away from Kittle, have him uh, into pass block. In the playoffs, he has an 82% route rate, so maybe a few more pass block uh, snaps coming up for him. Philly also, top four in catch rate over expectation allowed to tight ends at a minus 5%. Um, and specifically to tight ends, they allow a 5.9-yard ADOT. Uh, league average is 6.9 yards uh, to tight ends. So I think that Kittle probably doesn't have the volume that we want him to have unless you're just playing the angle of – um, like the 49ers playing from behind and there's a lot of pass volume, but yeah, I have this one pretty close. That's, that was my other question for you is like, do you have this game as like projected fairly close? Yeah. Toss up like yeah, legit toss up. I have one model that favors the 49ers by a half a point. Other one is Eagles by one. So like either way it's right around zero. So I think it's a very neutral script. And the issue would be if a team gets ahead, um, I don't know if the other team can claw back. Like I have more faith in the Eagles clawing their way back than the 49ers, but I think both these teams could struggle a bit if they're forced into a negative game script. Yeah. And uh, another one I have, this is, I do want to ask quickly about the Kittle thing, actually. Um, Any thought to going with the uh, reception prop under Uh, that's a three and a half plus one twenty two right now. And that kind of safeguards you if he has one of his stupid Kittle plays. So, yeah, um, I make this mistake later on, but you do ask specifically about yardage props. Um, So I I went with the yardage. I do like that. Again, he's averaging three and a half targets. Um, So that that's kind of a and and that's a two game sample. But yeah, he's kind of taken a back seat. And if you watch that post game interview with him and and Brock Purdy, it sounds like George Kittle is like just willing to do whatever the team sort of is asking of him. He's, He's not like demanding the ball. Um, or commenting on the fact that he's wants the ball more like someone else in this game. Uh, so, so like, I, I would not be surprised if Kittle, you know, is out there, you know, run blocking more pass blocking a little bit more. And even then it's not like the most ideal matchup for a tight end. So I do yeah. like that as well. Um, Big moment for pretty- Iowa, Brock Purdy, Iowa state, George Kittle, Iowa center stage. You would think they'd be enemies, but I mean, they were me. the Cyhawk. Uh, trophy just you know just that that can divide families it can divide 
dynasties. You know, it's, just, it's a big thing. Yeah. You expand the sample on Kittle to be all games with Debo, McCaffrey, et cetera, et cetera, healthy. It's 3.9 targets per game for Kittle in that sample. So larger sample is still under four uh, yeah. targets per game. So I think that the three and a half is very interesting for me. What was the other one you were looking at there? I had a bit of a heart attack because I couldn't find this right away, but I forgot it's like separated. So it's a, it's an over for rushing yards, but for Brock Purdy. Wow. I, <laughs> I love quarterback rushing props, especially in the playoffs because every play feels so interesting, but uh, he's at seven and a half and the over there is minus 112. He can run a little bit. Um, he can scramble a little bit. Uh, he's, I mean, if uh, who ha- who dropped that touchdown? Was it Ayuk in the back of the end zone? Can't remember. Um, but boy, he can he can really do some stuff. And so I think there's I think this works logically too. Um, there might be like an extra an extra rush or two uh, sprinkled Purdy's way because of the running back situation. But also the Eagles get pressure, and you know there's a chance that look, there's a chance that the 49ers kind of roll. There's a chance the Eagles roll. There's a chance this game is really neutral, but I wouldn't be surprised if Philly, you know, puts up some points here despite the defensive matchup. Um, and that's good for Purdy because the Eagles are allowing 2.86 rushing yards over expectation per carry to quarterbacks on the year. That's the fourth highest according to uh, NFL's next gen stats model. And according to that model, a league high rushing success rate allowed as well. Purdy in the playoffs, four for 16, three for eight. And I think this game could look unlike those other two where he ha- he's being asked to do a little bit more. And again, it's just he takes off, uh, breaks, you know, breaks contain one of those times for a first down and you're golden. So I, I love quarterback rushing props in the playoffs. Especially but I also when think it's a superstar here. like Brock Purdy. Right? I think there's some logic here because he can kind of he can kind of move around. And if he gets I mean, sacked, it doesn't matter. So if you also look at like what he's done with the 49ers, the one thing, the one thing he has added to this offense is he can do a bit more like off schedule than Jimmy Garoppolo could. Yeah. And like, you know, it doesn't always go well. Like there was a play he made at Iowa state where he like tried to create and then like was getting tackled through the ball backwards. The TCU player like picked it up, looked around. There was no more than 20 yards of him <laughs> ran in it for a touchdown. So like, it doesn't go well always, but like that counts as a sack. That's not a negative for your yeah. rushing yardage. Um, so if he if he does like psycho Brock Purdy stuff, that's fine. You know who cares? Uh, those rushing props that could still hit. So I think that one is very very fun. And touch- I, I I think the Eagles are gonna be focused on everyone but Purdy, and yeah. that's kind of how they. I would too. <laughs> I know. So they also ran a play with Garoppolo near the goal line once earlier this year and it's like oh that's a trey lance play but you kept it in i don't think i've seen that yet with purdy but like they did it with jimmy i feel like they do it with with purdy too yeah i, th- I could see that okay so we are both skeptical of points in this game which does play to the touchdown market so obviously probably not going to be like the most abundant market for you but any touchdown props you like in this game i have aj brown um plus 155. I have him personally at a plus 145. So a, a little bit there, but again, I'm not going to go uh, crazy with the, the touchdown props in this matchup, but the 49ers are actually allowing a, a catch rate over expectation of plus 2.6 points to receivers and a 19.3% target per route rate, which is highest of any team remaining. It's not particularly good anyway. Um, they've also surrendered a, a slightly higher than average end zone target conversion rate uh, to the position AJ Brown coming off that disappointing game. You get the little bit of comments. Um, I think he gets one here. Uh, and that could come from 50 yards out. It could come from, you know, the one. So yeah, I think there's a lot of logic behind uh, AJ Brown uh, getting a, getting a score here, even if it's one of the only few that there are in the matchup. You think about the weaknesses of the San Francisco defense. There aren't many, but like, outside shot plays that kind of thing like that's a place where they can be gotten and who is the better guy to you know take advantage of that is is aj brown so i think that he does make a lot of sense there. Oh, anything wow. else in this game you like uh, before we move on to the Bengals and chiefs no but san, uh, san francisco 29th in yards per target a lot on downfield passes the eagles are 32nd 
the Chiefs, I think I'm going to allude to later, or not allude to, but stayed out right, 31st. Mm -hmm. And the Bengals are 24th. So we could see some big plays here. Yeah, that wouldn't be super shocked. That is scary for my under bet, but I think that I wouldn't be shocked at all if that were to happen. Okay, let's shift focus now to the AFC Championship game and talk about the Bengals at the Chiefs. Again, uh, Chiefs money line slowly shifting their way. It's now minus 124. But same question we had with that Eagles 49ers game. What is like the overall view for you this game? How do you see this one playing out? I love this game. Uh, These are just two amazing offenses, which is not news to anybody. But the underlying data is fully supporting Mm -hmm. all of the, you know, all of the fireworks that that these teams can put up. Um, The surrounding news or the news surrounding, I should say, uh, Mahomes is honestly, to me, very shocking based on what I expected. Um, But the full practices to start the week just has me feeling good about their offense. And as for the Bengals, you know, playoff Jamar Chase is kind of very fun. Yeah. Um, so, you know, even after Mahomes' ankle injury too, like he was efficient. Uh, I know it's the playoffs, and so it always feels like you should insert some sort of like defensive boost and like downgrade points. But I don't really see it that way. And so I'm kind of all not like not all in on this game, but by comparison, I feel fantastic about this game. So uh, I like the over in this one. Uh, where Where is your uh, total model on this one? Uh, so if I run it with Mahomes healthy, 51.3. If I downgrade the Chiefs offense uh, because of that, it's 48.3 right now. So I took it when it was 46 and a half because it was very briefly there mm-hmm. during the Mahomes. And like it was me being hard headed. I know you're shocked to hear that, but like, I was like, he's going to play like <laughs> I've already made a downgrade. I'm not going to double count the stupid ankle injury. Um, so I took it at 46 and a half. It's 48. Now I think there's no more value there, but like, I agree with the general sentiment of like, especially if I upgrade them, cause he's healthier than I thought he'd be. Um, if I upgrade their offense back up again, 51.3, I think was the initial number I had, uh, before downgrading the chiefs and also increasing their, um, their rush rate. If I change those two things, it gets back up above 50 pretty fast. Yeah. I'm, I'm just expecting some points here and uh, that's going to filter in for not all of my props, but you know, some of them and I'm, I'm going to be uh, specifically for the Bengals. I, I think like, I think the wheels are up on the Bengals right now. So we're expecting points in this game. What does that do for you in the yardage prop department? What do you see in there? So if I was allowed, in the end, if I was allowed to uh, recommend... We're allowed to say whatever you want. Okay. Free reign. <laughs> then I will uh, primarily lean on a completion prop number uh, for Joe Burrow at 24 and a half. Over there is looking like minus 122. I don't hate uh, over 277 and a half yards at minus 114, but given the, given the choice, I prefer the completions. Um, I like the completions sort of in like a game script agnostic sense because the Bengals are not going to be allowed to like take their foot off the pedal if Mahomes truly is 100%. And even if they don't know that he is or he's struggling, they're not going to let up. Uh, We've seen him with 25, 23, and 23 completions over his past three, neither of which were really – like two of those were against the Ravens. One of them, yes, was against the Bills, but in the snow. And so he's already like flirting around uh, that number – in recent games and uh, Kansas city's 31st in yards per target allowed on downfield passes, which, you know, again, we're looking for completions, but if you want to go the yardage route, that, that helps. Um, And 21st in completion rate over expectations. So, you know, below average there just 17th in pressure rate. Um, So I have burrow at 25.2 completions a little bit there, but if I was kind of not trying to build like a mathematical case for it. I would say he's going to go over this. Um, but I, I would put that, I would put that completion number higher um, just based on, you know, if they're trailing, he's going to throw more. And he, you know, that works from a, a completion prop standpoint, uh, you know, more so than like a, a fantasy point standpoint. Um, but yeah, I think Burrow kind of lights this one up. Well, like, the two routes you mentioned are they, they get behind and they get ahead or neutral script, neutral script. They'll throw because they're the Bengals. They like to throw. Yeah. That's good. Uh, 
positive script implies they've been efficient, which implies that they've probably been completing passes. Negative game script, they're going to throw more, which means you don't need as high of a completion percentage to get to that number. So I think that you have three routes to an over there. Uh, so minus 122, not too bad. Over 24 and a half, the number on Joe Burrow in the completion market over at FanDuel, again, being the preferred market for Brandon there. Any other uh, non-touchdown bets you like here? I have Kadarius Tony under. No! <laughs> 35 no. and a half receiving yards. You paused, and I, I was like, I know it. The second you paused, I was like, dang it, he's going to stab me in the heart. Yeah, Ooh. that's why I clarified that just because I like the over in this game doesn't mean I'm just betting all the overs. Uh, that's weird. minus 114. And they had seven targets last week, but just 11 routes, which, look, you want you want a high you know, target per route rate. I'm not going to knock that. But uh, four of the targets were in the second half, so I don't necessarily know if he was like a – a true focal point in the game plan that just became Travis Kelsey again. Um, and it's tough. Cause like, I know he's good. I know he's talented, but I don't know if the role is, is there right now. Um, I can see him being involved, but if you go back to those targets again, it was a 1.1 yard, a dot. None of them were at least 10 yards downfield. I, I would have to see a huge role reversal for me to fear the over. Um, and I'm not, I, 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 I'm not really seeing it. So I'm going to lean on the under here. I think that the other route to the under is Miko Hardman being back. Uh, potentially he's yeah. not a lock to play. Right. He's been limited in practice both Wednesday and Thursday. And his absence has been so long. There have been so many setbacks in that process. I don't think it's a lock that he plays, but we don't really know what his role would be. Because like they are kind of overlapping. I think they should play both and just like go full chaos. Uh, but like, they don't care what I think. I think um, they should play Sky more. Just saying. I mean, yeah, <laughs> sure. Go go ahead. But I'm just sick of Mark was about the Scantling and Justin Watson. So like, you know, I don't really care. Whatever yeah. amalgamation gets you there, that's fine. Um, I think that having Hardman potentially back is, is one thing. And also like a lot of the reason that Tony is like viable is because he gets rushing attempts too. Mm. And that's not accounted for in this number. So John Sheeran, get us a rushing plus receiving prop for Kadarius Tony, and I'm I'll, I'll take a look at it. But I understand the under. I think that that's the right process play, despite the fact that it really does hurt me that you would do this on my show. Yeah, well, and, and a lot of his targets, like I said, you know, it they're not they haven't been that far downfield, which they count as receiving yards, which is scary. But mm -hmm. they're kind of like extended handoffs, so. Not, you know, I, I'm, I'm a little fearful, but not that fearful in the grand scheme. And the good thing is after his 80 yard touchdown, the first drive, you can just, you can know yeah. you can write his off as a loss. That's OK. You know, you yeah. don't have to crack it anymore. It's fine. So, yeah, that's true. Can enjoy the game. Uh, OK, touchdown props for Bengals and Chiefs. What are you seeing as value there? <laughs> I wanted to like load up on Bengals touchdowns, but I just didn't really see the odds there. Um, and I don't want to force anything, even though. You know, I feel like we'll get a T Higgins touchdown. I just didn't have the odds quite there to, to recommend. We had it. the T Higgins touchdown last week. <clears throat> yeah, and for the Chiefs, they spread it around, but they did not really spread it around too much last week. I'm going with Travis Kelsey minus 105. I usually like my touchdown props uh, to be more like golf bets and have a little bit of you know plus money on there. But yeah, um, look, we saw Kelsey return to like featured Kelsey last week um not that he hasn't been featured but in the red zone four or five red zone targets one of two end zone targets i'd really be surprised if whatever game plan cincinnati has takes kelsey out of things because look mahomes i know he's practicing but he might not be 100 percent full there could be a lot of timing uh that that is you know crucial because he's not gonna they're not gonna want him to go out there and extend plays like Mahomes typically does. So I think there's going to be some extra targets for Kelsey. Not that, I mean, it's hard to like build on Travis Kelsey's target number, but I don't He's think there's going, going anywhere at 17 this week. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Bengals have faced just four end zone targets by tight ends this year, but they're allowing a 20.6% target per route rate to the position, which is top three in football. So I think they're like their uh, touchdown numbers are kind of fluky. I think, I think the Chiefs keep things concentrated, really focus on that timing stuff. And if there's anyone who can just like get a red zone target by sitting down in the end zone or, you know, pretending to block and then, you know, rolling out into the end zone, 
It's Travis, Travis Kelsey, Kelsey pretends to block when he's actually blocking as well. We should clarify. Well, that. he you know he can he can lay some blocks here and there, but can he? I mean, that's how I play tight end if I were him, so I'm fine with it. But <laughs> no, I do have better. Kelsey Where did as a value. From? Who said Noah Gray is better? <laughs> that leaked into the audio. It came from the other room. What? Uh, must have been Rosa. But yeah, she's a I, huge Noah Gray guy. Yeah, I have I I do see some value on Kelsey, and you know, I'm fine with minus 105. It's not that egregious. So question for you. Yeah. Um, if we're making the assumption Patrick Mahomes is healthy, yeah, why are his touchdown odds eight to one? I know he's not going to scramble as much, as much, but are his odds of scoring actually longer than my heartthrob Noah Gray's at six to one? Are his odds of scoring actually longer than the Bengals defense at seven to one? Are his odds of scoring the exact same as the Chiefs defense at eight to one? I feel like that's a little long. And if we're talking about the way the markets have moved in this game, the markets are saying Patrick Mahomes is healthy because the Chiefs money line is um, is getting uh, getting shorter. The total has gone up a half point. Everything says he's healthy enough. I kind of feel like eight to one is long enough to where you have. He's almost as long as Ronald freaking Jones. Like. Am I stupid? You can say yes, that's OK. I'd forgive you. Um, I, I think the thing for me is, I don't know if I see him scrambling from like the five or 10 for a touchdown. And I don't know if they're going to have him quarterback sneak at the one, unless it is super crucial. So I think his opportunities to have a rushing touchdown are a little limited. He's 36 to one to score the first touchdown for reference. He's usually around like 20. Like, look, <laughs> look, you know, <laughs> you can't talk me out of it now. <laughs> I mean, we, we try to have everything based in, uh, you know, th- the math here. We is liberal. Well, okay. I, I, I do. Yeah. You know, I would not be surprised. Like, I would not be astonished. I should probably say if like Mahomes scores, I just like what what kind of rushing touchdown are you anticipating for him? It's only 25 to one or down sports. I hate this place. Ugh. 625 overall. Ah, I want to so, drive. I'm very lazy. Is this like a like a five yard scramble touchdown? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I think Mahomes is going to be efficient, but I think the fact that he's 100% healthy is a bit. I don't think he's 100% healthy. I think that this is over accounting for his injury. I'm just saying. Uh, look, man, uh, I can do it with you for solidarity if you'd like. No, I'm not going to. No, I would never. <laughs> Absolutely not. Do you Maybe see you any other? For... <laughs> I might need you to do it for me since apparently I have to drive to Connecticut to do this. But like, um, yeah, uh, I think I think that one's very interesting. Do you like see, we've uh... seen every other market move that one? I checked this one yesterday, which means that I've had this on my mind for I thought about this for more than 24 hours and still brought it up, which it makes it stupider. Um but it hasn't moved despite the fact the money line has moved. The total has moved. Everything is saying he's healthier. And that one is staying the same. Is that uh, is that your preferred anytime touchdown? It's my favorite anytime touchdown of the weekend. Yes. I think you say of my life. No, that would have been uh Rashid Shaheed eight to one on a Monday night when he didn't score. He had like 80 yards, but didn't score. That one was fun. I enjoyed that a lot. Actually. No. Um, Oh, what was uh, Tanner Hudson for the Giants? That was a good one. I like that one a lot. It also didn't work. So maybe, I just, maybe I shouldn't talk myself into these, but you know. I do have Hayden Hurst, I guess. He's plus 300 on FanDuel Sportsbook. I have him at like plus 280, but. I think that's that's intriguing too. I yeah. would be okay with that one as well. Okay. Any final thoughts for you before we close up shop for today? Uh, I think we covered it. I uh, hope everyone enjoys football this weekend and the Royal Rumble uh, as well. Uh, more excited about the clash next weekend. I'm uh, building out my my model for it uh, as we speak. So we'll be talking some clash next week, talking some NASCAR. We're gonna have a lot of different people on the show next week talking 
EPL with Austin Cass. Uh, we're going to talk some hockey, some basketball, some golf. We'll talk NFL on Monday, like I said, but we're going to have a smorgasbord, and Brandon will be involved with that uh, back with us on Tuesday to talk about some golf. That is all that we have here for today, though. Again, if you have not listened to our full preview with Ryan Williams, check that out on the Covering the Spread podcast feed and the FanDuel YouTube page, and make sure while you are there, you hit subscribe to get these as they go live each and every weekday. Uh, Brandon, I want to thank you for swinging by for today. Good luck to you both in DFS and uh, in your bets. And also, good luck with Royal Rumble. Do you care who wins? Does someone oh, win? How does this work? So much. I care, yeah. Who do you want to win? Uh, I want to... Well, it's probably going to be Cody Rhodes, but I want to swerve and see it be Sammy Zane. Is he related to Dusty? Sure is. Okay. My dad loved Dusty. It's all right for him. It's his son. It's his son. He's on a, he's on a redemption. I thought tour. Dusty was real old, so I'm surprised his son is like that that age. Yeah, um, but he's on a redemption tour. Uh, okay. Got derailed. Tourist pack was Oof. one of the coolest things ever. Yeah, coolest things ever. Pit tearing your pack. No, he, awesome. he, he he wrestled through it. It was it was sick. Oh my gosh, it's strange. I'll send you pics. And I don't really want to see them. It's probably very purple, and I don't want to see it. So uh, I'll pass. Uh, I'm taking you off air. It's uh, Brandon Gadula. Find him on Twitter at Gadula13. Check out his work over at Number Fire. I'm on Twitter at Jim Sanas, J I M S A N N E S. Want to thank you all for tuning in throughout this week. Good luck to you with your conference championship bets. Back to you on Monday for our first look at the Super Bowl. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 